Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to class today. Uh, we are going to start laying down. Um, you will want your strap. So go ahead and grab that and make yourself comfortable. Feel free to put a, um, a, a light blanket or something under your head if you if you would like or something under your knees. We won't be uh, laying down for long, but we're gonna start by stretching uh, the legs um, once we've gotten settled in. And adjust my lighting a little bit, it's too dark or too bright. All right, now I'm gonna stay seated just for a moment to read uh, Donna Faltz, um, one of her poems uh, from her book, Go In and In which is interesting because I've had uh, this book for a long time and I feel like I've read every poem in it. And then I discovered one this morning that I hadn't, I don't think I've seen before. So with that, just find yourself comfortable. Maybe close your eyes and let the beautiful deep breath move in through your body and out just holding on to nothing. This particular poem is called Healing. There is healing in the laying on of hands, in the letting go of fear, in asking for help, in silence, celebration, prayer. There is healing in speaking the truth and in keeping still, in seeking sunlight and not shunning struggle. Laughter and the affirmation of wholeness hold their own healing. When the soul dances, when the day begins in delight, when love grows and cannot be contained, when life flows from moment to moment, healing happens in the space between thoughts and the breath before the first sung note. Healing is a birthright and a grace when we dare to be open to the unknown, when we extend ourselves in caring, when we welcome in the vast expanse of life, healing comes from the heart and blossom, blossoms from the inside out. So just breathe that in. feel that in your body and sometimes we think healing is from an illness or an injury but it can be so many things if we are open to it if we are willing and perhaps we greet this day with that openness that willingness to let go of fear to hold and speak the truth and to let our hearts be open. Deep breath in and deep breath out. If your legs are straight, go ahead and bend the knees and allow your feet to come to the floor. Your feet are gonna be about hips width apart, maybe a little bit wider. And I want you to just press a little more into the right foot, just a little. Feel the muscles, feel the change, the shift in the body, the pattern of the body. And then let that press of the right foot go. Press into your left foot and feel that the left side engages, but it also lifts a little bit away from the floor. And let that go. And then press into both feet. Don't lift anything, just press into the feet. And let that go. And then walk the feet together. Your knees are still bent, but the feet are now touching. And just allow the right knee to go down toward the right. Doesn't matter how far it goes. The left knee is staying. 
straight up and down, pointed up toward the ceiling. The hands are relaxed. I have mine resting on my belly. Just pause there. Allow the right knee to be heavy. Find your breath. And then let the right knee come back to center, touching the big toes. And then let the left knee fall out to the left side. Just notice again. Nothing else to do. The left leg is heavy. The left inner thigh stretching. The hips probably a little bit askew. Draw both knees back to center. Go back to the right side just for a moment. Letting the right knee be heavy. Keep the... Um, the feet kind of touching each other. So my left big toe side is touching the bottom of my right foot. Keep the right knee where it is and let the left knee just drift off to the left. So it's almost like Baddha Konasana, but it might be skewed to the right side. Don't try to make it even. <laughs> Find your breath. Just let the legs be heavy. Draw both knees to center. Allow the left knee to drop off to the left. Pause there. Start to let the right knee drift to the right again. Don't, don't try to even this out. Just let them be. Both knees to center. Both soles of the feet together. Both knees out to the side. Just pause. So we're just doing a little, very gentle warm up of the inner legs, inner thighs. Watch your lower back. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Good, one more right there, deep breath. And let it go. Draw both knees together. The feet are touching. Cross your left knee over your right knee. Your left knee over your right. So you're just crossing the knees. Start to let both knees go to the right. Now your left foot's going to touch the floor. You can go as far over to the side as you want. But don't go into a super deep twist here. Just let it be gentle. I'm looking more for a stretch in the outer left hip then I am a true twist. So just let the knees be heavy to the right. Draw the knees to center. Undo the knees. Cross your right over your left. Draw the knees, both knees to the left. Pause. Take it back to center, undo the knees, cross left over right again, both knees to chest. Depending on what you've been doing, you may feel a nice stretch along that left outer hip. Keep the breath soft and easy. Don't overdo it, just feel the stretch. And then let that go, both feet to the ground, both feet touching, cross your right knee over your left, and both knees to chest. Again, deep breath in, deep breath out. Both feet back to the floor, undo both feet, grab your strap, finally take the strap over your, or Around your right foot, take the right foot up to the ceiling. Straighten the left leg if that makes sense for your body. <clears throat> right, so nice slow start to class. Just getting everything moving. Tone in through the lower belly. Lift the left foot off the floor a few inches. Hold. Let the left foot rise up toward the ceiling. So both legs are... Uh, equal to each other or straight across from each other and then slowly lower the left leg until it's a few inches from the floor. Nice and controlled, lift the left leg 
Exhale, let it lower. Good, one more here, lift. And lower, this time lower that left leg all the way to the floor, bend the left knee, let the foot come to the floor, take the right leg out to the right. So your left foot stays on the floor, right leg is out, the foot is flexed. The hips here are relatively even. Big stretch for inner thigh, hamstring for some of us. Watch the back of the knee. Inhale, reach up, switch hands, take the strap in your left hand, take the right leg across, and then just crisscross the knees or the thighs so that you get a deeper stretch along this outer hip and outer right leg. Ooh, yeah. Big deep breath. Hold, breathe. If your right foot is drifting down toward the bottom edge of your mat, see if that right thigh will come a little higher up, a little more level with the line of the hips. And take that leg up, bend the knee, release your strap. I want you to straighten both legs. Both legs, maybe windshield wiper the feet. Check out the hips, check out the legs. And then bend both feet or both knees. Take the strap around your left leg. Take that up to the sky, straight in your right leg. Just hold here, right? So depending on how we sleep, depending on our activity, this might be easy. You've already been out and about and gotten everything warmed up. This might be tight. Just notice. And then nice tone to the lower belly, lift the right foot a couple of inches. So a little bit of core work here, right? Breathe. Take the right leg, lift it up so it's next to the left, hold for a moment, and then lower the right leg until it's a couple inches from the floor. Inhale, take the leg up. Exhale, slowly lower. No momentum here. Pauses at the top and the bottom. Good. One more here. Lift. Exhale, lower. Hold. Allow that to go all the way to the floor. Bend your right knee. Put that foot on the floor. Take the left leg out to the left. Allow the right leg to maybe drift or the right knee to drift out to the right. Let's breathe. Good. Bring it all back to center. Take the strap in your right hand. Allow your thighs to crisscross. This is always my tighter side for some reason. Try to keep the hips relatively level. If you're lifted a little off the left side, that's okay. But don't make it a big one. Deep breath. Pause here. Good. Inhale. Take the leg up. Bend the knee. Release your strap. Straighten both legs. Bend both knees, both feet to the floor. Your hands underneath your sacrum. So I've got my thumbs just lining up underneath the sacrum. Draw both knees to your chest. The shoulders are down to the floor. Both legs up to the ceiling. Both legs. Breathe. Good. Lower just the right leg a couple of inches off the floor. And then take it back up. Lower the left. Take it up. Take both legs wide. Take it to center. Cross right over left. Bend the knees. Bring it to chest. No hands if you can help it. If the hands under your sacrum aren't necessary, you can plant those hands. Take both legs up, flex your feet, tone the belly, lower the left leg, just a couple inches off the floor. Take it up, lower the right. Take it up, take both legs wide. Cross your right over your left, bring them into chest. Release both legs up, almost done. Lower the right couple of inches off the floor, hold here. 
Good. One, you hear two hands go behind the head. The upper head, neck, chest all lifts. Don't pull on your head. Don't pull on the neck. Just breathe. Keep the left hand where it is. Reach the right hand for your right foot. Ooh, squeeze that, everybody. Squeeze, squeeze. Can you come up any higher? Put the hand back behind your head. Lower your head. Take that leg back up. Lower your left side. Squeeze in through the lower belly. Sacrum is neutral. One, you're here. Two, you're lifting the head, the neck. Three, the left hand only reaches for the left foot. The legs are fired up. The feet are flexed. Squeeze. Can you lift a little higher? Hand back behind your head. Lower the head. Take those legs up. Both of those legs go wide. Breathe. Cross the left over the right. Just draw them into your chest. Hands behind your head. Lift up that head neck so that your nose is heading toward the knees. And lower. Both legs straight. Go wide. Last one. Cross right over left. Bend the knees toward the chest. Lift the head neck optionally. Lower. Undo the knees. Bring your knees to your chest. Roll over to one side. And come on up. Here's our little warm up today. Whew. Good. Straighten the legs out in front of you. Just a nice little dandasana here. Flexing through both thighs, both feet, the hands down at your sides, shoulders are back. Inhale, reach up. Hold on to the beach ball, everybody. Want you to take your left hand down to your left knee and raise your right leg. Oh, I am mirroring here in case you're confused. Lower that down, take the arm up, lower your right hand down to your right knee, lift your left leg. Woo! I know, right? Simple stuff. Lower that down, both arms up. Take your left hand down to your left knee. Lift your left whoo, while pushing that hand down. And lower, take that arm up. Last one, last side. Right hand to right leg. Push as you give it a little resistance. And lower down, shake that out. Ooh, good. All right, left leg. Uh, left foot comes into the inner right thigh. So Janusarsasana, or that's what it looks like. Um, maybe take the block underneath your knee for support. If you don't need it, you don't have to use it. Open up the chest. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, swan dive forward. You can use a strap here. I would rather see a strap than I would uh, want to see this rounding funky stuff in the lower in the uh, upper back so I'd rather see you up nice and tall nice wide chest <sighs> breathe here everybody and as you do if this were if you have your right leg extended you're going to draw that right femur that right thigh bone back into the hip socket pressing back through just act uh act Ugh, activating, that's the word, not aggravating, but activating the thigh muscle. Deep breath. Take the torso up, grab, a uh, bend your right knee, grab your, either your foot or your ankle or your shin and take that leg straight up. So the torso is nice and tall. The chest is lifted. Again, you're supporting that left knee if you need it. Take the left arm out. Again, I'm mirroring here, so I'll do my best to keep my left and right straight. Take your right leg out to the right. Keep the chest tall. Breathe. You can also hold on to your shin or by the knee, right? So no strain. Take the leg back to center. Grab that foot with your opposite arm. Oh, say hello to that outer hip, outer thigh again, right? Breathe. Take it back to center. See if you can let go. And then lower down fully. Straighten both legs. 
Good, maybe point flex, <clears throat> circle them out, smile. <clears throat> Same thing, other side. So we're gonna bend, if I'm mirroring here, your right leg, your right knee, supporting underneath the knee with a block if you would like. Nice flexed foot, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Again, broadening through the collarbones, taking that rounding out. Um, I was reading uh, an article and it was just about walking and it was talking about um, uh, ways to walk. And one of the things that they said was, is when you're walking to keep your chin level. And I love that. I've never heard that cueing before. Um, so if your chin is level, your gaze is forward as opposed to when you're walking, your chin is down and so you're looking down. And I thought that's really kind of perfect for yoga in a lot of poses. If we can keep our chin level, we're not we're going to be much less likely to round the upper back. All right, come on up. Bend that knee, grab your foot, your shin your knee, none of the above. Take the leg straight up. You can take the other arm up. Sometimes that really helps for balance. And by the way, I should have said that on the other side. You can always keep a hand down also for balance. Take that leg out to the side, hold. Big deep breath. Bring it back to the center. Grab it with your other hand. Oh, I have been doing these kinds of outer hip stretches for a zillion years, and still I feel them every time I do them. Deep breath, soft shoulders. Take it center. See if you can let go. And lower all the way down. Nice job, everybody. Shake out those legs and breathe. And come into a super soft, super easy Baddha Konasana. I know a lot of stretching this morning. So soles of the feet are together. I am not bringing my heels all the way in. That tends to create a lot of knee compression uh, for a lot of us. So heels away from the groin just a little bit. The sit bones draw back. The chest lifts again. And we breathe. Take the hands behind you, maybe fingertips just for support or palms of the hands, lift the chest, bring the knees together, straighten the legs, breathe, and then go wide. Just let the heels slide out on whatever surface you have, if they will slide. Good, and then bend the knees, bring the soles back together. Draw the knees up, straighten them out, bring them wide, just hold, see how that feels. Try to keep from over leaning back. Bend the knees, Baddha Konasana, last one, bring the knees in, straighten the legs, take it out, hold, and then bring the knees in, bring the knees together, straighten the legs, well done everybody, and just shake those out. All right, I think hips, legs are sufficiently warmed up, let's come to table pose. Table pose, if you happen to be on your hands and your knees uh, in table pose and you would like a little more support under your knees, just take your blanket uh, or your pad and uh, we're going to be here just for a little bit. So having said that, if your wrists get really cranky, either go to fists, make sure your ankle or your wrists are strong enough, or drop down to elbows and worry less about anything we do with the upper body. All right, belly tones in, press the right leg back. Lift the right leg, hold. Draw your right knee to your right elbow. Tuck the chin if you would like, and then expand and lift. Good, draw it in. Reach it out. Last one, draw it in. Reach it out, level out the hips, take the left arm out. Find your breath. Balancing table, breathe. Now listen up, if you can, leave the left arm out, turn the palm down, lift the left arm a little bit, 
lower the right knee. That in and of itself is hard to do. And then lean forward a little bit. Core, big time, right? Breathe. Lower everything down. Reach back. Stretch it out. And take it back up. Plant the hand, spread the fingers. Reach the left leg back. Level out the hips, lift the leg. Good, just three times as you exhale, squeeze that knee to the elbow, tuck your chin, and then inhale, lift. Exhale. Inhale, lift. Last one, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze it in, and then reach it out. Hold here, take the right arm, balancing table, belly tones in. If this were not core enough, turn the palm down, lower your right knee. I know that's tricky. And then try to take the torso forward any amount. You all feel that? Lower that down. Lean back. <laughs> so my friend and neighbor, Celeste, here was also a yoga teacher. And um, she gave me some old yoga journals. That was in the yoga journal. I'm like, oh, I've never seen that before. So props to, to that. All right. Back to table pose. Lower down to your elbows. Soft interlace of the hands. Reach the right leg out. Tone the belly. Find your breath. Un, um, one, you're here. That's plenty enough for you. Two, undo the hands as if you were in sphinx pose. Tone in through the belly, squeeze your glute. You can flex your foot. Still here, walk the left fingertips forward. Find your balance. Notice, lift the arm if you can. Breathe, lean forward slightly if you can. Breathe. Release the elbow, release the knee, squeeze back. Almost done with this little fun thing. I know you're fu having fun with this, right? Come on back up. Last one, down on your elbow, soft interlace of the hands. Press the left leg back. Lift the leg, try to level the hips. One, you're here, you're pressing into the forearms. You're enjoying this pose. Otherwise, undo the hands. Walk the right fingertips out. This is all optional. Lift the right hand if you can. Try talking and doing this at the same time. <laughs> and then lean the torso forward just a little bit. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And release, release that knee. Come on down. Child's pose or something else that feels good. Hmm. Notice your breath. And then come to table pose. Uh, if you want, go ahead and take your blanket out of the way. Uh, we're going to be getting moving a little bit more. So from table pose... Plant the hands, flip your toes under, and find downward facing dog. Pedal out your feet. Shake out your hips. Maybe the feet just go a little wider, wider than your normal. Not big wide, but just a little. And then hold on to this pose. Dig the tip, tips of your fingers in. So hold on by... What I mean by that, blah, blah. What do I mean by that, right? Fire up the arms, fire up the shoulders. Hold on to the muscular engagement of your upper body. And then very slowly float to plank pose. Slow. Hold on to that bunch of goodness between those elbows. Squeeze the belly in. Lengthen the tailbone. And then fire up the legs like you're squeezing a block. Big deep breath. Lower the knees to the floor. 
sink back either long arm child's pose or puppy stretch round the back come on up release the back to neutral find downward facing dog from down dog to plank hold breathe lower the knees reach back last one here round the back up release it to neutral notice i'm not saying release it to cow come to downward facing dog from dog to plank optional here one you're holding building strength to the right leg lifts Big deep breath, everybody. Let that energy flow through you, that breath flow through you. Lower the right leg, lift the left. Lower that, lower your knees. Come on back, child's pose, hero pose, any pose that takes the pressure off the wrists and gives you a moment of rest. Find your breath. Maybe whatever pose you've chosen, whichever pose you've chosen, you shake out your wrist, you grab them and give them a little squeeze. Breathe. So much, really so much of what we do in yoga, if we think about it, it's weight bearing, it's bone building. It's all these things you've heard me talk about before. We just need the pauses in between um, to make sure that we're giving those uh, body parts a chance to recover all right come on up everybody last one of this little little play time <laughs> plant your hands Whew. draw the inner elbows toward each other flip your toes under downward facing dog one you're here two the right leg lifts please honor your body please honor your process your right foot is either up or down. Slowly float to plank. Hold one legged or two. Breathe. Inhale here. Exhale. Bring your right knee to your elbow. Release to two or three legged plank. Go back to downward facing dog. Lower that foot to the floor. When you're ready, down dog. Left leg lifts or not. Hold here. Strong upper body, strong arms. Slow float to plank. Breathe. From here, again, optional left knee to left elbow. Let it release straight back out. Go back to down dog. Lower that foot. Lower the knees. Take a moment. Use your breath. I remember doing a stress test for the fire department and the doctor told me during the stress test or afterwards, he said, it's not as important how much your heart uh, beats when you are in the middle of your test. It's important how quickly you recover once you stop. And I think about that in yoga. It is that recovery of a portion that shows how healthy and strong your heart is. So I thought that was really fascinating. Keep that in mind. All right, we got one more. Here we go. I know, right? So much fun. All right, open up the shoulders, everybody. Remember, you got lots and lots of options. Flip your toes under. Take it into down dog. One, you're here. Two, the right leg lifts. Bend the right knee. Open that right knee out to the side. Breathe. And then straighten it. Level those hips out. Plank pose. One or two feet on the floor. Breathe. Hold. Right knee to right elbow. Reach it back out. Lift up to down dog. Lower the foot if it's lifted. Same thing, other side, lift, left leg. Bend the left knee, open the left knee out to the side. Stretching through those inner thighs. 
Straighten the left leg. Float to plank. One or two feet. Bring the left knee to the left elbow. Straighten it back out. Downward facing dog. I know, I know. Lower that foot. Holy moly. Lower those knees. <sighs> Release into whatever pose feels good. <laughs> Good thing I'm teaching on Zoom. You can't throw blocks at me or something. <laughs> oh, good. Shake it out. Well done, everyone. All right. Find your way to standing. If you would like another down dog, go to down dog. Take the feet wide. It's my favorite way to come up from the floor. Walk your hands back. Bend the knees and come on up. Good. Just just shake out those uh, shoulders a little bit. That's a lot of work, right? Good. And release that. Grab your blocks and bring them to the front of your mat. Take them up nice and high. Your feet are a little wider than hips width apart. Nice deep hinge from the hips. And just let your hands come to your blocks, even if they're higher than you need them. Let them come to the blocks. You can walk the blocks forward a little bit, bend the elbows forward, fold. And then imagine your sit bones lifting up toward the ceiling. Keep a soft bend in the back of your knees. And then bend the knees and sit back. The hands are still resting on your blocks. And then straight. Bend the knees, sit back, and straighten. Good, one more here. Bend the knees, and straighten. Lower the blocks by one, hold. Bend the knees, sit back, and straighten. Two more, bend the knees. And straighten. So you're really coming into a squat here, right? Each time. Bend the knees. And straighten. And then if you don't need your blocks, and some of you do, especially for your lower backs, move the blocks out of, way, out of the way and let your fingertips come to the floor. Press into the four corners of your feet. Bend your knees. Sit way back. Your fingertips are just barely hanging on to the, to the mat. And breathe. Start to lift the chest just a little bit. Take one hand to one knee. Start to lift your chest. Lengthen your tailbone. Find chair pose. Watch the knees. Breathe. Stand all the way up. Nice swan dive all the way down. Walk the fingertips forward or back to your block. Sit back in your pose. Nice long squat. The arms are straight. One hand to one knee, one hand to the other knee. The belly tones in, the chest lifts, the tailbone lengthens, and the arms raise up. Breathe. Stand all the way up. Exhale all the way down. Breathe, 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 everybody. Smile. Notice you haven't thought about a whole lot else in the last 40 minutes or so. Last one. I like I like threes. I don't know why. Maybe I'm because I'm the middle child. Bend the knees, sit way back. Open up the collarbones. Hands to knees. Lift your chest. Lengthen that tailbone so you don't put all that weight in your lower back. Take the arms up. Hold on to that beach ball. Breathe. Try to press the feet away from each other. Stand all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. And let go. And shake that out. Good. Blocks to the front of your mat. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward fold. 
Soften the knees, step back, right leg. Coming into a lunge now, you can lower that right knee to the floor. Your back foot is straight ahead. Your front foot is straight ahead. Your feet are hips width apart on separate railroad tracks. Left hand to left knee, push everything up. Whoop. And both arms, breathe. You got this, everybody. Hands to heart. See if you can straighten the front leg. This is balance. And then just bend the front knee. Go slow. Find your focus point. Level out the chin. Straighten. You know, we got to do one more. Straighten. <laughs> and bend. Take your hands to your blocks. Straighten the front leg. Drop the back heel. Stretch it out. Bend your front knee. Just one more here. Take the left arm up. We might as well do a twist while we're here. Giving those organs a little squish and a little opening. Bringing blood flow into the spine. Take that hand down to the floor. Bend your front knee. Step forward. Bend both knees, take it up. Exhale to your heart. Good, release, let's do the other side, all the way up, all the way down. Soften the knees, step back, left leg, check your footing, see if it's working properly for you. Squeeze through those legs, right hand to right knee as you press all the way up. Breathe. So once again, finding your balance, take those hands to your heart, find that focus point. Your chin is pretty level. Straighten the front leg. Whew. And bend. Straighten. Whew. And bend. Last one, straighten. And bend. Nice job, everybody. Release those hands to your blocks. Leave your left hand where it is. Take the right arm up. I realized I knew there was one thing I was forgetting. We'll come to that in a moment. Let that hand come to the floor. Drop your back heel straight in the front leg. Little nice stretch for the back of the leg. Bend your front knee. Step forward. Bend both knees. Take it up. Exhale to your heart. Let those hands come down, shake everything out. So I, uh, Iyengar said that the way, I'm paraphrasing here, but the way to the soul is through the body. The body is our temple, right? Our human experience is through the body to get to the places that we were meant to get to with our hearts and our souls. And so yoga, right, finds that balance of moving through the body to tap into other places. All right, come on up. Inhale, we're going to add on. Exhale, take it down. Soften the knees, step back, right leg. Breathe. Left hand to left knee, push it all up. That's a tricky thing, right? Instead of both hands to the knee. Yeah, breathe. Hands to your heart. We've already been here. Straight in the front leg. We're only doing one. Bend the front knee. Hold. Lift the chest. Hands to your blocks. Left hand goes up. Just bring in a twist into it. Exhale that hand down. Straight in the front leg. Already been here. We've already done this. Your body knows what to do. Here's where we add on. Bend your front knee. Walk your blocks forward, push off, and lift so that that leg is fairly level with the hip. And breathe. Optional, one, you're done. So just let that leg come down to the floor. Two, bend the right knee. Open up the hip. You got it. Lower the knee. 
Lower the foot next to your other foot. Bend both knees. Inhale, take it up. Exhale to your heart. Pause here. Notice how you're feeling. Happy, tired, wired, bored. It's all good. Exhale, let go. All right, last one, last side, I think. <laughs> you never know with me. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, take it down. Soften the knees, step back, left leg, find that beautiful lunge. Right hand to right knee, lift up. Whew. Balance, balance. Breathe. Hands to your heart. Just one straight, go slow, find your focus. And bend. Hands to your blocks, straight in the front leg. And bend. Left hand stays down, right arm reaches up, coming into a twist. Exhale that all the way down. Walk your blocks forward. Push off your back foot and lift. Bend the knee optionally. Take the knee out to the side. And lower everybody all the way down. Pause here in a nice, easy forward fold. Hands are on your blocks, on your shins, or at the floor. Try to maintain length in your spine. And breathe. And then bend the knees. Hands to your knees. Come on up. Whew. Shake it out. So we've got one thing left um, that would be considered challenging. I'm just looking around, see what I got to hang on to. We're going to do half moon. Haven't done that in a while. It makes sense in my brain, right? All the hip work, opening up those uh, thighs, that kind of stuff. So the way I like to teach it, and please feel free to be near a piece of furniture, uh, a wall, um, I've learned from the half wall that I don't want to rely on that because <laughs> my leg went over it one time. I didn't go over, but my leg did. I was like, okay, that's no fun. Grab your block. I'm starting, I'm not mirroring here. I'm starting with my left foot forward. And, you know, and I know this is not the standard way to teach it. I've had many teachers say that's really not the way to teach it. Grab both blocks. I like this version and I'm going to do it. So there. All right. So um, bend your front knee, whichever side you decide on. Take your blocks to the floor. I have one up high and I have one at the second level. And I just want you to feel this to start. My left leg is forward. Therefore, my left hip is going to roll back so that my left knee is pointing straight ahead. My left hip is pointing straight ahead. If I walk my blocks forward, I still have both of them, and lift my back leg. I might hang out right there, but I'm going to take the left hand block and I'm going to adjust it because I want shoulder and wrist to be relatively over each other. And I want to feel this left foot solid on the ground. I'm not leaning forward. I'm not leaning back. I might stay here. The right hand block is like a little training wheel. If you want to go more, just power up. It's going to seem weird, but power up the right leg. Press it away from you. Squeeze the left glute, left hip. Let go of the right hand block and take that right hand to your hip. <laughs> it's there if you need it. Still good. Start to open up the hips. Maybe turn the gaze, Whew. wobbling, wobbling, and, and take the right arm up if you would like. Breathe. And release, Whew. shake it out, let go. 
See, I shouldn't explain things while you're in the pose. <laughs> That's a long time to hold on to that, baby. All right. Same thing, other side. I'm just going to turn around so that I don't have my back to you the whole time. All right. Less explaining. <laughs> Let's do the second side. So here we are again. I'm going to step back with my left foot. My right foot's forward. My right hand is on the block. That's my stability. Left hand is my little trainer. Step, uh, step and lift that left leg. See how it feels. What's the right hip doing? Is the right hip rolling forward and causing the right knee to roll forward or inward? Breathe. Once you find your spot, decide, do I want to let go of the block on the left side? Take that hand to your hip. Check it out again. Fire up the left leg. Breathe. Maybe start to open the hips more and take the left arm up. Breathe. <laughs> and let go. Ooh, bend both knees. Take one block with you. Come on up to standing. Take the block between the thighs and give that a good squeeze. Ooh, that feels good. So the reason I've been told that that isn't the proper way to teach, we're going to do it one more time on both sides. We won't hold as long. Let me explain first <laughs> before we get there. So because half moon is what I would call an open hip uh, pose, right? I'm not facing forward. I'm facing sideways like warrior two. The way we did it, is we took the hips forward first and then opened, right? So if we then, if we instead start in warrior two, not a long one, not your biggest expansion, take the block, left foot forward, block in your left hand. You're gonna lean forward, find your spot, set the block down, lift up, and take yourself into half moon. So. Presumably, the hips are already open because they're already in the position that you want them in. And then take the arm up. Ooh. And breathe. And let go. Drop down. Goodness gracious. Shake it out. Other side. Right foot forward, hand in the right block. There's um, where you put the block that you're using or your hand, by the way, you don't have to have a block, is again, a, a personal preference. What they say is six to 12 inches in front of your forward foot is usually best for everybody. What you want is shoulder, wrist, hand, in alignment for stability. All right, so right hand, right foot, left hand can go to your hip. You're already in this kind of warrior one-ish or warrior two-ish stance. Lean forward, set your block down, and then slowly lift the standing back leg. Open up, now I'm nervous about my half wall there. Open up. And maybe take it up. Release. And come to standing. And take that block between the legs. And squeeze. When you squeeze, try walking the feet in a little. And then plant your big toes. And breathe. and let go. Well done, everybody. That was way too much fun. All right. So from the front of your mat, inhale, take it up. Exhale, forward fold. Pause here, shake it out. Soft back of the knees, walk both hands to the right. 
The legs are relatively straight, but they are soft. And center. And to the left. And center. Bend the knees, downward facing dog. Breathe. Lower both knees to the floor. Plant your hands. Take the left leg straight back. Bend the knee, open the hip. Been here before. Kickstand your right heel out. One, you're here. Two, you're going to raise that left arm. Reach it back. You can grab foot, ankle, or not. Chest is open. Chin is level. If you've got the foot release, come out the way you came in. Circle the left arm. Reposition the right chin and lower that knee. Good. And other side. From table pose, extend through the right leg. Bend the knee, open the hip. Kickstand the left foot. I always have to adjust my hand so it's more in line with the knee. And then take your other arm up or reach for the foot. Chest is open. Find your breath. And release. Come on out the way you came in. And lower down fully. Nice child's pose or come to your belly. Whichever one you've chosen, if your eyes are open, close your eyes. And imagine the space between your eyes softening. And imagine the worry or the fear that you hold there, your seat of intuition. Imagine that that melts as well. If you've chosen child's pose, come on down to your bellies. You are already on your bellies. You're good. Lower the upper body. Let the hands be a pillow. Breathe. From here, sphinx pose. Shoulders draw back, belly tones in. Make sure you're not sitting heavy in the low back here. And then one, you're here. This is our final, final. You're going to walk your right hand forward. You're going to bend your right knee. Let's see if I can get this right. Correct. You're going to take the left arm up, reach it behind, see if you can grab your foot. And open, push foot into hand. So it's a weird little cross body, right? From one shoulder to opposite side leg. And release. Back to Sphinx. Walk the left elbow forward. Bend the left knee. Take the right arm back. You can hold foot or not, right? That's not the important part. Push the foot away. And release. Come on down. Bend both knees. Lift up through the torso. You can either be on elbows here and just stay and be happy. You can come up into sphinx. And stay here and be happy. You can just be happy, <laughs> right? Go to Shavasana, be happy. Or you can do what we've been doing last two classes, coming into bow. We've been playing with bow a bit. 
So the shoulders move. Don't worry about coming up tall, right? Move the shoulders away from the floor. If you have your feet, push your feet into your hands and breathe and feel the chest open, feel the heart open. Big deep breath. And release everybody. Shake out your hips. Bend the knees, windshield wiper. And then roll over to your side. Pause there. Just bend the knees and pause. Use an arm for a pillow. Always back bends, right? We want to allow the spine to neutralize a little bit. And then come on to your back. Feet are on the floor. Draw your right knee to your chest. Hands go behind the right knee. Extend the right leg straight up. Come into figure four, right ankle to left knee. Bring the knees toward your chest. You can hold on to the underside of your left thigh if you'd like. Keep it a little soft. Release that side. Both feet to the floor. Extend the left leg straight up. And breathe. Shoulders are down. Take the left ankle to the right knee. Come to figure four on this side. And release. Both feet to the floor. Take the right leg up. Take ankle to opposite knee. We've been here already. Take the knees toward the chest and then that right foot, bring it across or bring it down to the left side. So this is another twist. Your right foot comes to the floor. Your left leg will relax down to the floor. Don't try to hold it up in the air. Chest is open. The arms can be in a uh, cactus or straight out. Big deep breath. Just breathe. Listen up. You're going to take that right foot that's on the floor and you're just going to lift it up and put it back down on the floor in place. Right, right at your, you know, where we started, foot to the floor. And then let the left knee rise up. So we're back to neutral. Left leg lifts up to the ceiling. You come into figure four, the knees head toward chest, not all the way, a little bit. And then the left foot comes down to the right. Once that foot lands, relax the other leg, relax that right leg. Find your breath. As we move out of this twist, you're simply going to lift your left foot, put it back over on your mat, lift your right knee. Both knees are even again. Draw both knees to chest. And then one leg extends nice and long. The other one nice and long. We find our Shavasana. You may want something under your knees, under your thighs. And consider 
maybe one hand resting at the low belly and one hand resting either at the upper belly or at the heart, as long as the arms are comfortable. Mm -hmm. And as you start to move into your Shavasana, feel the breath underneath the hands, feel the movement of belly chest. And know that this is the only moment we have right here. This moment, this breath. And let that be enough for now. Let that be enough in your Shavasana, this moment. Soften down, let go. Soften down even more. Those of you who are ready, that's one of those Shavasanas. I know we could stay there for a long time, but if you're ready, go ahead and wiggle your toes. Maybe circle out the ankles. 
and then bend the knees. Draw the knees to chest. Give yourself a little hug here. And then allow the knees to roll over to one side or the other. Curl over in fetal pose. And then ever so slowly press up. Finding a seat. Mm. Inhale, let the arms come up. Exhale to your heart. Good, let's do one more of those and end class with an OM. If OM is unfamiliar or uncomfortable for you, please choose a word that speaks to your soul, like amen or anything else. Here we go, inhale. Namaste, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, my loves, have a great day out there.